Hi, Sherry. I'm Molly Johnson. I'm a nurse practitioner, and I'm going to do your eye exam today. Any problems? Any well, I have noticed a little bit of a change from, you know, sometimes my far vision and my near vision both, but the most of the range, the mid-range, is good. Okay. And when was the last time you had an eye exam? Um, a little over a year ago. Do you wear glasses? I wear glasses for driving, and sometimes I wear glasses for reading. Okay. So, um, to do the eye exam, you want your patient to hold the chart about 14 inches from the eye. Um, we will have you have a string so you know exactly, but it's about this distance. And then you need to have your um, patient cover one eye, but not press on it because that'll affect the vision when they go to read with that eye. So just cup over that eye as they read the lowest line that you can see comfortably. Then you look over their shoulder and see if they're able to get that right. Okay, four, two, eight, three, six, five. Okay, and then we're gonna trade eyes and three, seven, four, two, five, eight, and then I can see the nine, three, seven, eight, two, six. Okay, and so the so I can see the twenty, twenty-five line. Yeah, so twenty, twenty-five on the left and twenty, thirty, minus one. There was one wrong on the. On the other eye. Okay. okay. It's also an option to have them read it forwards one way and backwards the other way if you want. Okay, so then we move on to inspection. And at this point, I just want to inspect her eyes. I'm looking at her eyebrows and checking to see if there's any scaling or inflammation. The eyebrows go all the way out to the lateral canthus. Then I look at the eyelids. Um, can you close your eyes real tight and then open them real wide? Okay, so she's able to open and close the eyes without any problems. Um, I don't see any styes, any hordeolum, any chalasian, any discharge, any exudate, any exophthalmus. Um, and then for lid lag, I'm gonna have you just follow my finger and we're gonna go down and the eyelids follow the eyes without um, showing the whites of the eyes above them, so there's no lid lag. Still looking externally, I'm going to check the lacrimal apparatus, the lacrimal gland up here and then the puncta here, and um, I don't see any inflammation in either of those areas. She's not having any excessive tearing. Let's do the bony orbit, so just feeling around the bony orbit, making sure there's no step off fracture, any difference in the in the level of the bone, any tenderness when I do that. And then looking at the conjunctiva, I want to pull down on the on the lids and then have her look up and then do the opposite, pull up and have her look down. down. And when you do that, you're noticing the color of the sclera um, and the conjunctiva. The sclera was white, the conjunctiva was pink, there was no cobblestoning there, no pterygium or um, pinguecula, no evidence of foreign body. If I was concerned about the possibility of foreign body, then um, we could do flip back the eyelid to look. You can place the stick from a Q-tip and flip back the eyelid so you can see the conjunctiva underneath. Looking at the cornea, I'm checking for um, arcus, the white ring around the iris. I don't see that. Um, there's no inflammation. I want to check to see if the cornea is clear using my ophthalmoscope. I'm going to shine the light obliquely. It's clear and I don't see any shadowing on the inner aspect that would uh, alert me to the possibility of glaucoma. Okay. If I um, saw any surface abnormalities or was concerned about the possibility of a foreign body or a corneal abrasion, then we would do fluorescein dye staining. And we want to check the direct and the consensual light um, reflex. And so we're going to shine a light on the pupils, first looking at the eye that we shine the light on and looking for constriction of the pupil. And then you can also check to see that it dilates after you move the light away. And then doing it again and looking at the other eye to see that that eye constricts and then dilates. And then you have to do the same thing, checking this eye, direct, 
and then again, consensual. Looking at the other eye as I do the consensual light reflex. For accommodation, you ask the patient to look at a distant point, and then while looking at their eyes, then you ask them to look at a closer point and you check to see that the pupils constrict in response to the, the near vision and that's accommodation. For the corneal light reflections, you want to shine the light from a little farther away and get the light on both eyes and then do the cover and cover test by covering over one eye, moving my hand away. The um, light reflection stays in the same location when I do that, and then on this side, move it away, and it's still in the same location. So no evidence of strabismus, exoptropia, or, or uh, esotropia. For extraocular movements, you want um, your patient to look at your fingers. I always think of this as the blessing. So you ask your patient to keep their head still and just follow your fingers with their eyes. And then you move it slowly to the side and you pause long enough to see if there's any movement of the eyes, any nystagmus. You pause at each extreme and then you go over here. And if you just say to yourself, pause, pause, in and then move in toward the eyes, not all the way to the nose, but just far enough so you can see that the eyes converge. And saying pause at each extreme just as long enough that you can look for the nystagmus or any abnormal movement of the eyes. Okay. We're going to do um, visual fields by confrontation. So for this, you're approximately a foot away from your patient and you want to be about at the same height. So Sherry and I are at a good height for each other. You ask the patient to cover one eye gently, so you can pick whichever eye you like. And then you do the mirror image of that, okay? Just look at me. I'm going to be wiggling my fingers and you tell me when you see them, but keep looking, looking directly at me. So you want to be close enough and the same level as the patient so that they can't see your fingers when at the extreme and then you wiggle them and they tell you when they see them. Can you see them now? I do actually see them at the beginning. Good now? Um, barely. Okay. Yeah, now I can see them. Okay. And then she keeps her hand in the same location and you come in from this yeah. side. And one thing to keep in mind when you're coming in from this side is to be careful not to move your fingers in so that you're no longer in the upper field. But to, if you had to come all the way in, you'd still be in the upper part of the visual field. And then um, tell me when you see it this way. I see him. Okay. And then trade eyes. I see him. Okay. See it now? I see him. This is some information about the ophthalmoscope. First, you turn it on by pressing down on the green button, just like you do the otoscope. There's different sizes of light, a large one, a medium one, and then the smaller one. There's also a green light that's usually pretty good for looking at vessels and also for lesions on the cornea, uh, a slit, and then the bullseye light. Um, those you adjust with the dial on the back. Uh, for the retina, you want to usually use the largest light. Then on the front of the dial, you see the diopters, and on the side is um, a dial where you adjust that. So theoretically, if your vision and your patient's vision were perfect, that then at zero diopters, you would be perfectly adjusted to see the retina clearly and distinctly. But because we all have variations in our vision, you're going to need to change the focal length to um, adjust for both your patient and your vision and uh, to give you the sharpest viewing of the vessels, the retina. Then when you want to look at the anterior part of the eye, at the lens, you want to change your diopters up to 10 to 15 in the green range and that will move the focal length up closer uh, to the anterior part of the eye so that you can look at the lens clearly to see if there's any cataracts or any kind of lesions. But now I'm going to um, do a retinal exam and look at the red reflex, so I want to change my diopters back to zero. So first thing you want to do is dim the lights. 
And then uh, if you wear glasses, you can try it with or without the glasses to see which works better for you. Um, for me, I do better without the glasses. And then if the patient wears glasses, though, you do want to make sure that they take their glasses off. Um, then you ask the patient to look off at the distance and that helps dilate the eyes a little bit. You are going to get very close to your patient so you want to let them know that. Um, when you are examining their right eye, you are using your right eye. As opposed to the otoscope where you um, place it in the ear and then you move toward it. With this, you, you put it right up against your eye and then you move toward the patient. Um, you can either put your uh, a finger above their eye and kind of lift up a little bit, or if if you don't feel comfortable doing that, but at least have some sort of um, hand on the patient so you're stabilizing yourself against them. And again, it's good to uh, be at about the same height as the patient, um, so you might need a step stool if if they're too tall. Okay, so then to do to look at the retina, you start about. 15 degrees or so off to um, the side and I see the red reflex and then I move in closely and I look for a blood vessel and then when I find a blood vessel then I start following that more medially and look for the optic disc and then um, I check that out and then I can look around at the retina as well and um, it's possible to look at the macula you don't you don't have to do that it's the last thing you're gonna look at because the patient will start tearing and you can't stay there very long um, but as you're looking you can ask the patient to look at your light and that should put the macula right in front of you if your patient starts tearing, then you can just stop, have them blink a little bit, and then you can start again. Okay, and then for the other side, then you switch hands, because I'm doing her left. I've got my fingers on the diopter, so I can adjust it if I need be. Um, as I look at the eyes, I check and see the red reflex immediately, and I would make note of that in both eyes and then I move in close looking for a blood vessel and then I follow that vessel to the optic disc and then look around okay and then to check for the lens and clarity of the lens I change my diopters to about 10 and then I just look and see um, at the at the lens and see if there's any clouding or if it appears clear.